I went to college with Chris too. Uh, I actually met him at, down in Rolla. Like there's 13. a lot of people who who hung out in Rolla um, in a room with no windows and a guy looking at porn in the background. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like that, but a bigger stash. <laughs> it, was and it wasn't normal for it. It was like some serious thing. <laughs> 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 We're not Why? kidding. There was a guy that used to hang out in the computer science lab and just look at the portal. Uh, so, That's what those uh, are for, right? So Chris actually he, he started out life as a model for the first Cabbage Patch doll. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, but but shortly after he started to get older and his career as a Cabbage Patch doll, doll model ended, he said, huh? He, he didn't go with the Garbage Pail Kids? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was headed. <laughs> um, so so Chris started programming at, at seven, yes. if, I, if I got yes. it right. Um, basic. He, he, basic. That's, that's a lot. So I asked Chris to send me uh, some bullet points about him because pretty much all I know is that he was a Cabbage Patch doll model and he went to Rolla. Um, so so what, I, what I found out about Chris was pretty interesting is that his favorite color is blue and he's so in love with blue that you could offer him a MacBook for free or a pile of shit for 10 bucks. Was blue and he would. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, is that a good thing about blue or a bad thing about MacBooks? It's because he loves blue. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a MacBook here, so I'm assuming he likes them. Uh, <laughs> MacBooks can be reinstalled with Linux. Use one machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Chris is really in love with Lisp. Actually, the, the last time that I remember talking to Chris in college, is he was uh, using Lisp to try to predict the stock market. And I had never heard of Lisp or anything, and we're in this dark CS room with this mustache guy behind us looking at porn. And Chris is like, hey, come here, look at Lisp. I'm like, but you see what's on the screen behind me? It's Lisp, you should look at this. So uh, that was my introduction Introduction to uh, to Lisp scheme-based languages um, was, was Chris predicting the stock market instead of watching porn on the guy's shoulders. Uh, so. in the wrong place? <laughs> uh, so Chris is um, uh, not only does he like Liz, but he, he also has a lust for Ruby. Uh, <laughs> hey, those are his words, not mine. I only made up the cabbage patch doll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and um, I, Chris has spoken here a few times, and I asked him a couple weeks ago or a month ago if he would be coming up. So he's got some good stuff to talk about. And next month, his sister is speaking. So we're just going to make this a family thing. Your first talk. So That'll be my first talk. Nice. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to let you go now. And okay. I'm going to sit down and quit cussing out loud. <laughs> so, so, boobies, right? right? So, uh, I didn't get drunk on my 21st birthday. And I was very sad about this. I was, a, I was working, like, literally the entire day. It was dot com, like 2000. And so I didn't get to work. 22nd birthday, of course, the company had already completely collapsed and I was out of a job. And some of my friends were aware that I had not actually drank on my 21st birthday, which is, you know, horrible, horrible. So they fixed that. Okay? One of my friends, he makes this thing called absinthe. And I don't know if you know what that is, but oh my god, that's not absinthe. So it's, you basically start with pure grain alcohol, like never clear, and it, that's not what's messing you up. So I end up drinking tons and tons of that stuff. Uh, end up going to Steak and Shake about two or three in the morning, and across the thing, I'm making fun of this guy <laughs> with this. He had like a really nice watch, and he was like, I guess trying to show off his watch. And I'm like, Oh my watch, you know? And I was just making fun of him at full volume <laughs> in rhyme successfully. I think I thought I was really messed up, <laughs> just like drooling, drooling. But in my mind, it sounded. Perfect. Uh, and then I'm end up going back to that friend's house, and how I wake up is in the hall bathroom, like, kind of like, kind of like this, right? And there's a toilet. Like, and I wake up. It's about two in the evening the next day, and the first thing I do is I see the toilet. And I'm like, why is there a toilet in my bed? Does it didn't make any sense. I'd be sleeping in the bathroom. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 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 that 
but what about the cliff one? <laughs> so the mole uh, that's was a STLD. <laughs> Why is there a toilet on That was not alcohol. That was not alcohol. Okay, that is another time pass for then. Oh, man. <laughs> Favorite condiment was much shorter. <laughs> much shorter. Yeah. <laughs> but not near as entertaining. <laughs> I actually can't this recall if I got on my 21st. I did on my 20th. So, you said, really who's new? Who's new here, Ruby? But everybody Jim Jones. Cool. That's good. We started out very basic. Mm -hmm. Like, just like, what's a class? What's a class in Ruby? And then very quickly yeah, evolved into ridiculous <laughs> stuff. So, like, the first half will be kind of easy and boring if you know Ruby and very interesting to you guys. And then the second half will reverse. And so, <laughs> so, there's something for everybody. And something for nobody. So, there you go. So, in Ruby, you've got classes and lots of programming languages are object oriented, including Ruby, but Ruby's different. Very different. <laughs> it's weird and it's awesome. So, yeah, yeah, this is an awesome picture. You don't see it? So, it's, it's especially unique snowflake. Everything about it is especially unique snowflake, including its object oriented system. It's kind of based off of Smalltalk. But kinda not. It's nothing really like Java or C plus plus. It's it's its own thing, and it's a really cool system actually. So, in some object-oriented systems, only some things are actually object -y things, right? So in C plus plus, you've got ints from C, you've got floats from C, and then if you make a class, it's a class. And there's a bunch of other stuff that's not a class. Classes. Lots of stuff's not classes. Well, in, in Ruby, everything is a thing. Everything is a class. Numbers are classes. Strings are classes. Floats are classes. Arrays are classes. Hashes are classes. Symbols are classes. Classes are classes. Classes are classes. <laughs> Everything's a class, which is cool. Because then we can, that's an easy way to insist on the right thing. We only want that one type of thing, and we can use this unique feature of Ruby to insist on only that one kind of thing. Like, I only want numbers for my function. I love numbers. I hate all things that aren't numbers. So we need four variables, k, m, n, and o. And here's four ways to do a simple check to say, I want a fixed number. What's a fixed number? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> there you go. There's a six number. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's it's kind of an integer, but not quite, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a meta class for numbers that aren't floats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's a subclass of integer. So it's an integer that is a fixed size. So you know, like one, two, three, Keep negative going. forty. Can you can you lot, tell me all of them? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the allotted time, but at some point it's too big to fit in a fixed number. Or too small if you go the other way, too negative. Uh, so we're saying that K, M, N, and O are all fixed numbers. The first and the most uh, readable, if you don't, aren't familiar with the syntax, is just, well, what's the class of K? Let's make sure it's actually a fixed number. And if it's not, raise an error, because it's wrong to not be a fixed number. Uh, Basically identical is you can do the instance of operator, and it, it's exactly identical to the equals. There's also is it and kind of, and they're actually different, but we'll talk about that later, why they're different. But for this simple case, it works. And since we can check the class, we can make sure that we do different paths. Maybe we actually are okay with not just fixed numbers, maybe we do actually love all numbers, or at least more than just fixed numbers. We love two types of numbers. We love fixed numbers, that's pretty cool, but you know what, floats are better because they're stuck past the decimal point. That's awesome. But if you give me a string, what's wrong with you? Even classes are things, like we said. So, foo has a class, right? And that's a symbol. Well, the class of the symbol class is class. And in a nice little bit of symmetry, the class of class is class. Inception. 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 All the way down. All the way down. Class it's turtles. Way down. It is turtles. Classception. Classception. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, <laughs> the other really cool thing about classes is that you can make your own class. Like, say you're really interested in cats, because this is the internet, so you probably are interested in cats. So we'll make a cat class. This is the internet? Yeah. And, you know, this is the internet. Everything's the internet. It's the internet of things, and we're around things, so therefore we're in the internet <laughs> right now. <laughs> Makes sense. It's like the reverse of the matrix. Yep. Instead of us going into the computer, the computer's coming out to us. Can't argue with that. The world will become the computer. The world will become the computer. So, what do cats do? They have a color, they sleep, and they have nine lives. So, here's a cat. Oh, they eat tuna. Except for my cat. He doesn't like tuna. Uh, so, we make a new cat. His name is Lucky. He's a black cat. That's why he's lucky. And is he alive? Yes. So, we can have methods in our classes. Like the initialize method, the die method. But since it's a cat, it gets to die a bunch of times. It dies. <laughs> um, and we can figure out if it's alive. It's not a simple Boolean because it's a cat. But these are actions that a cat can do. And, you know, just like you and me can do things, classes can do things, which is great. Because it's a good way to encapsulate our code. And cat too. <laughs> so some other methods that are less less interesting than cats are ATMs because they probably actually want to get a job. And jobs usually don't care about cats, but they might care about your finances. <laughs> so we'll do ATMs, right? So what do you do with an ATM? At some point, somebody's going to install it in some wall of some building downtown and encase it in brick or something. So you've got an initialize. What do I type of something? What do I do? My nine. I yeah, I, I count. I count. Error. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to file. We'll have to file. I hate it when my Ruby doesn't file. <laughs> you shouldn't say that when new people are actually here. <laughs> so my Ruby never compiles? <laughs> I'm going to show you the slide. Yeah. Anyway, so we initialize, our, uh, we have an actual ATM, but this is like the class is the generic idea that, oh, there's ATMs, and we want to do stuff with an ATM. For a specific ATM, we're going to install it in the wall, encase it in stone, put security cameras, and then stick money in it. We initialize it with some <laughs> amount of money, and that's the amount. So we initialize it with some amount of cash. Now, what do people do with ATMs? Sometimes, they have money in their pocket. And they're like, I've got too much money in my pocket. This is not a situation I ever have, but here it happens. So they're like, I'll put it in my account. And so they do that. So the ATM will have to have some idea of there's an account. That'll also be an instance of a class, probably an account class. And then an amount of money that you're depositing into your account, which is great. So you add the amount of money that's in the ATM because all, the, your, all your 20s are now sitting in that box. And credit your account. Pretty straightforward. Now, what's more common is you need 40 bucks so you can go out drinking. So you go to your ATM and you withdraw money from your account. Except for, you might not have $40. So we need to have an air condition for that. Or you might be trying to drain the entire ATM because there's a run on the bank. We don't even want to have that happen. But if that's okay, then we like to withdraw money from your account and we give you your cash. So those are three things that you can interact with the ATM with. Now if it's a nice ATM, you can do other stuff, but this will do for 99% of people or their ATMs. But you don't just want to do things. You want to have things. This cat wants to have sushi, and it has it now. <laughs> so how a class has things is an instance. So, like, so for example, the ATM had the amount of cash in it. It's a, it's a variable, basically but on a particular instance, an instance variable, or an attribute. So, for example, a person might have the attributes, you might care about their name, and you might care about how old they are, and nothing else. You don't care about anything else about this person. So, you can initialize, you pass in their name and their age, and it gets set on instance variables, which look weird. They got little at signs in front of them. Now, the nice thing about instance variables is that they're private to just the instance. The bad thing about instance variables is they're private to the instance, so you can't get to them. But conveniently, Ruby has a bunch of little modifiers, like attribute reader, ATTR reader. So after I've said attribute reader with the little colons, and I missed a second colon. Yep. Yeah. Should it 
Yeah. Won't compile. <clears throat> won't compile. <laughs> So that'll totally compile. So it just won't work. I sense a theme. If you try to access that name, I did that. If you try to instantiate a person, you'll get an unknown symbol name error, I suspect. Yeah. I, I, no, yeah. I totally did that yesterday and it told me, like. Let's let you work. go on until you actually try to use. Yeah. Until yeah. you try to use name. Until you just take a new one or so. Yeah. 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 So when you say editor reader, all of a sudden, so if you use Java and you've done the getters and setters, you, that's a lot of typing for no good reason. Why not let the computer do the typing for you? What it does is it actually made a program a little reader. A, a, a getter. One for an age and one for name. And then, so we make John and Fred. They're two people. They've got ages and names. John Jacobson and Fred Fellows. You can read the ages of them. And then you can check that they're not the same person, which is nice, but that has nothing to do with the... Uh, the instance variables. But what you can't do is you can't change it. You can't say john.age equals 50 because we use attribute reader instead of attribute writer or accessor. So there's only the getter, not the setter. If you do attribute reader, you can read. If you do attribute writer, you can only write. I don't think I've ever done that. I don't know if, has anybody ever actually just done attribute writer? It's there. I don't know why, but and, and if you actually care to do both ways, you do attribute accessor. Yeah, I've never used it. I've never used it. So what this is doing is this attribute is it's giving you the stuff. It's a getter and a setter. So let's do another one. We've got a car. We want to be able to change the color because you know maybe you are at a chop shop, right? You run a chop shop and you get this BMW in. And it's silver, and so you need to make it blue. So you want to be able to access that. You want to read and write, but you don't. Want, you don't change the mileage or odometer for whatever reason. Maybe it's too difficult. So that's only a reader. So you get a new car in the door of your chop shop. You say how many miles there are on it. Four on this blue car. It doesn't say. But let's say it's BMW. I'm gonna buy one. And You've stolen it. You drive around for 92,000 miles. That's cool. Now your mileage, you can still read it. It's 92,004. Well, now you need to repaint it. Now you want it green, which is inferior to blue, as we were used to have a bunch But it's, you do what you got to do, right? So it doesn't get stolen. But since we didn't specify a setter for mileage, since we only say attribute a reader for mileage, you can't do that last line, that mileage plus or the mileage equals. You can't roll back the odometer. You'll get a no method error. You can define separately as a different operation a mileage equals op, uh, method if you want. But for the easy case, you can just use the accessor. Well, so you've got variables on the instances, right? So like car, this car has, this car has uh, this mileage and this color, and this other car has a different mileage and a different color, and all of your cars are going to be different, right? Well, maybe you actually care about stuff in general about the class. Uh, this is rarely actually the right thing to do, but you can do it. It's uh, basically a class variable you have a double add sign. The only times I've actually legitimately had to use it is if there's some resource limit, like, oh, I can only have eight file descriptors because of whatever. And so I'll keep track of how many I've got open of either database connections or whatever. So it's usually on implementation details every time you're legitimately using this. Um, but maybe you just want to know how many people you make in your game. So maybe uh, that would be a decent usage of a uh, class variable as well. It's kind of like a global variable, but it's not global because it's just in the class, which is all you really usually care about. Uh, so you can, when you initialize an individual, the very first thing you're going to do is you don't pass in the population, but you do, behind the scenes, step it up one. And then whenever the person dies, you know, maybe it's a little video game and they're little warriors and they're shooting each other, then you drop it down one. And just like you can have variables that are per class and not per instance, you can have methods that are per class and per instance. So, for example, say we have a person and we're getting in strings from some file and it's just 
the name of the person and when they were born and when they died, in just a string, a simple text format, right? So you take this file in, you split it by lines, and then you want to parse them. Well, that's not a thing that's per, well, there's two ways you could do it, right? You could actually first make the person do say person.new, and then say person dot from string, and then pull in the string. But it's easier to just have a, have a from string method that's on the person class that instantiates a new one for you. So like George Washington, you've got this string for George Washington, and you do the person from s, and it's making a new one for you in the operation. And the same for Ben Franklin. So you can have instances generated. It's like your own new in this case. But you're going to do other methods that make sense on a per class basis. And often like library functions or what have you. Now the really cool thing about object-oriented programming is inheritance. Nah. Unfortunately, not this kind of inheritance. So, yeah. Since we actually have to work because we didn't inherit anything, we have to learn inheritance. So with inheritance, so there's a taxonomy or hierarchy of concepts, right? So a laboratory retriever is sort of kind of a dog. It is a specialization of dog. It's a sort of dog. Cat's not a dog. But they both can be pets. So you end up building this giant tree of, pers of this type of thing is uh, derived from this other type of thing, and so on. And you can encapsulate whatever functionality is common to dogs in the dog class. And whether it's a Labrador Retriever, or a Golden Retriever, or a Beagle, or whatever, you're fine. You know, there's a lot of things like dogs need collars, dogs need their flea and tick medications, they need bones. Cats don't want bones. Well, maybe a fish bone. Yeah, probably not. But they both want to be scratched behind the ear. So that's common to all pets. So in our, this in our world. <laughs> What's that? Oh, ish. Fish. Fish. <laughs> Fish do not want to be scratched behind the ear. <laughs> so this is where our hierarchy breaks down. How do you instantiate a pet? Cases, they break down eventually. No, no pointer exception. No, no pointer exception. <laughs> I don't have an ear, I'm a fish. <laughs> fish of food, not pets. <laughs> Sometimes they're decoration. They're moving paintings. I thought those were movies. <laughs> so here's how you'd actually write that, right? So we've got this class pet, and you, in reality, you'd probably put a whole lot of stuff in there. You know, this, these don't, don't actually do anything. But from that, you can derive your cat. And you use the little uh, less than type uh, sign to do it. And dog also comes from pet. But Labrador Retriever, that comes from dog. And you can do this for as many classes as you need. Hundreds, thousands. If it's Java, millions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we can get back to what is a kind of an instance of is. And the whole, so since we've got a hierarchy, right? I might really, really care that a thing is a fixed number. But I might actually just care that it's an integer or a pet. You know, or I might be happy with anything, period, any object or just a float or a numeric or whatever. So, so for example, 12 is a fixed number, 3.14 is a float. Uh, is a. Is a works for anything that is that class or any subclass. And the same with kind of. Is and kind of are synonyms. I kind of prefer kind of because is a, I don't know, it just kind of sounds better in my head. <laughs> instance of, instance of is exactly specifically that. If I say it's an is instance of integer, it better be an integer. Fixed num won't do it. If I say it is an instance of fixed num, I can have some derived class from a fixed num. Only a fixed num will work. So 12 is not an instance of a numeric, but it is a numeric. Or it's a kind of numeric. So instance of is kind of like the double equal sign. Now, in Ruby, everything derives from, well, nearly everything derives from object, which derives from basic object. Now, one of the irritating things about class variables is there's, well, it's good and bad, depending on what you want to do. They're shared by all the children, so like for example, if we have a parent and a child, 
and it's got this foo array. Everything in the parent class can happen, but everything in the child class as well can get to that. And that might not necessarily be directly obvious. Like maybe you actually need to keep track of, well, we have these many parents and these many children, or these many vans and these many trucks. And if you put a count in automobile at the top, you're just going to get the big count. You're not going to get how many trucks, you're going to get how many automobiles, and they all change together. So for example, like this, you have two parents and two children, uh, and we add on one and two to the parent and the child, and then uh, there should be a dot foo, dot foo, and daddy, and dot foo. But um, yeah, so all of them have the exact same array for every single one of these, because they're sharing it. If you want something that's not shared, but since we, we can use class instance variables, because the class is a class, it's an instance of a class, you can therefore have instance variables on the class to make it nice and confusing. <laughs> so we've got this class A, right? And it's got an attribute accessor inside the class definition block thingy for X. So, and then we've derived a class B from A. We've set, and then after that, we set AX to A and BX to buzz. If we then make a new A and a new B, or if you just look at AX and BX after that, they're actually still different. It didn't override it. If we had used instead the uh, class variables, they'd both be buzz because that's the second thing we call. Chris, what is that? Line to class B at yeah, self? So Operation. Class inject self. Yep. Okay. That's saying that everything up into the next end actually exists on the class itself, on the class object. That is well, the, the eigen class. Da, da, da. <laughs> You're ahead again. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> they call it foreshadowing. Okay. It's foreshadowing. <laughs> okay, it might be. The eigen class. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> now, the only irritating thing is, is you can't get it with a double add sign, but that's fine because double add's kind of dumb. But you can get it at just, you say the class, you can get the class, so then you just do a.class.x or b.class.x. <clears throat> so the next thing that's really neat and weird about Ruby is <laughs> you don't have multiple inheritance like uh, C++. Uh, so that's the same as Java, right? Java does not have multiple inheritance? Correct. Okay. But that's okay. If you really need multiple inheritance, you can have mixins or modules. We'll get to mixins next. So a module's like a class, but you can't make an instance of it. So it's just the class uh, methods and just the class variables. And typically you don't even do class variables. You'll just do constants and methods, usually. It's a static class. Yeah, yeah. In, in Java land it would be a static class. Big old bag of function. Big old bag of function. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a uh, namespace. Kind of sort of, but not because, yeah. <laughs> it's its own thing. So, Say you hate the simplicity of the plus operator, you want to spell it out every single time. So you make this math stuff. And first off, you realize pi is inferior, you get this better pi, 3.15, it's more, therefore it is better. <laughs> <laughs> you have the subtraction, which is also much longer and more verbose, then therefore it is better. So again, you're coming from Java land, so the more you type, the better it is. <laughs> you get paid more that way. You do. You get paid by the Paid by the line? Paid by the line? Paid, no, because you usually string on the one line and you need like 10 point font and you got like 1080p monitor. And you know, it's all like, that's so one variable, like 50 yeah. characters. Paid by the hours. Yeah, it's pretty much just for characters. <laughs> <laughs> so we can call math stuff that addition directly, but we can't make a new math stuff. That's just not allowed. Now the other cool thing we can do with these modules is you don't necessarily use them directly. Most of the time, what you're going to do with them is you're going to mix them into your class. So maybe you need some math stuff in your class, so you'll include your math stuff. Maybe you need some string stuff, so you include your string stuff. Maybe 
you need something else. Include that too. So it's like multiple inheritance. So like let's say you're in a corporate job and you need to keep track of customers and employees and probably other stuff too. Well, you might say, okay, at the top we'll have a person, and a person is a customer. A customer is a person, and you go from there, right? And then employee is also a person, but not this customer. Well, you know what? Maybe it's a yeah. Is that kind of the same way? Or is that later? Hmm? Is that yeah, kind of the same way? Yes. Do they work with yeah. models and mixins? Are yeah. they still synonyms, even with mixins? You could say that, right? I believe so. I'm pretty certain that they do. Well, uh, is a well, kind of a, work if you've included a module. That's what I'm saying. Right? Yes. All right. Then you are, you are now that type of module. I'm never yeah. trying to do that. It shows up in the ancestors. In the, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, in this, like, yeah. So a human customer would in be a, a, is a person. Order, as far as I can tell. Yeah. 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 It is a function. Yeah. 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 It is a function. From a, from a grammar standpoint, just a really quick uh, hint, I like to think about uh, class, classes as the nouns, methods as verbs, and Modules are almost always adjectives and sometimes adverbs. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So your customers you might want to do the hierarchy where a customer is a person, like derived straight, like a class. But you've got big corporate customers; they're not people. Corporations aren't people. No matter how much the law would like to argue otherwise, they're not people. But human customers are. So you have this base class that's a customer, and from that you derive human customers and corporate customers. And employees are all humans, unless I guess you had like some sort of like subcontractors. They probably aren't humans, but they're kind of employees. And robots, they're employees, but they're not humans. They're not people. You know, they're resources. They're resources. Wait, I thought that's what people were. <laughs> Human resources. <laughs> I hate your yeah. face. I don't know. We were talking on the human section of the bus today. Yeah. <laughs> So what you end up doing though is you make the person module, and human customer includes the person module. And so does employee. That's a person module, including thing. And so like all this person module does is give name, age, and favorite color because all people have favorite colors. Some have better favorite colors than other people, but everybody has a favorite color. Everybody has some age, and nearly everybody has a name. And it's just like that. You just say include they the person. The so like employee, you've got to include the person. And now there will be uh, accessories for name, age, and favorite color. Um, oh. Singletons. They're lonely. One is the loneliest number. And you should never use singletons. Except for when you really have to. And then you're probably still wrong. But anyway, <laughs> here's a singleton. So first off, it's not really there. You have to require some, yeah. Slightly less often in the class with Andrew. <laughs> or slightly more often than was half class with <laughs> Both of I don't know which one I pretty closely uh, I don't verbal. know if I've ever really used singletons that much. Uh, I occasionally do use class variables. So I'd probably be the other way around. Yeah, yeah. I have to say I'm kind of the other way around. I've occasionally used the singletons. So do you do you uh, do resources in them? Or what do you do in them? Usually it's factories. Oh, okay. So you have to require the singleton who loaded the file because they don't want you to even use it. So it doesn't come by default. And they hope that you won't realize you have to require it. And you're making your slides and you're like, why can't I do a singleton? And you're like, oh, OK, that's right. I can require it. They're trying to push you in the right direction. It's nice if I read it that way. <laughs> um, so after you require a singleton, all of a sudden you get a mix-in. The singleton mix-in. So we have this class. There can be only one. And it has only one thing. Name. So the first, and the other thing is you can't do new, you can't instant, yeah. Are classes singletons? No. No, I don't think, no, no. No, I mean, can, like, when you do that class, class. anything self, is that class? <laughs> no. No, it's an instance no. class. Because you can okay. make more than, yeah, that's an instance. A class, but there's oh, only yeah. one. Instance There's only that, that one. Class. That, no, that's an instance. No, it's, it's like, an instance of class. Yes, right. but it is an instance. Right. Class has so many instances. only one instance of class of that class. No, wait. About that class. Not necessarily. What? No? Yeah. 
That's like that's like saying that if you have a person class and you knew of a person. Mario. That there's, yeah, there's she's Mario. going one hell of a level higher. Yes. That Mario is now Mario. single. Okay. He says instance of class. Okay. There was the, only one instance of class that is like, person. She's talking that's about because person template. So it does class, when you right? when you define a class called person, it does two things. It news up a class and it assigns it to a constant with the word That's what I was gonna person. say is the trick well, is the trick is the classes have, start with a capital, which means the classes are all constant. But it's just that's the that's you can make lowercase classes. When you, when you yeah, you can, yeah. and you can make unnamed classes. You can have you can make an array and just give you a bunch classes. of classes, and they're there and they're unnamed. Really Until you assign them to a constant, and once you assign them to a constant, Ruby does something special, and now they're so it's not a singleton, but it's a yeah. constant. Correct. Unless it's not. <laughs> Unless it's not. <laughs> Unless it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's really <laughs> yeah, you can just. You but once, once you assign it to a constant, it, 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 it will respond to is generate. a in that constant. So if you've watched Highlander, uh, <laughs> you've you realized that there was one really, really good movie, one okay movie, and a bunch of other movies, and a TV show that was, eh, sometimes good, sometimes not too bad. But there's two Highlanders, even though there can be only one. It's like the main theme of the whole thing. And somehow in the very first movie, uh, spoiler alert, but it's a movie from like 84, so too late. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Connor McLeod is the one at the end of the movie. And then like 10 years later, they make the TV show, and there's this other guy. And Connor McLeod's there, and he's like, hi, guy. Okay. like, yeah, I thought you defeated everybody, and you're the one. With Who's the, this guy? With the same last name. With the same what? last name from the same village in wherever, Scotland or something. And they're like the same clan. Duncan McLeod of the Clan of McLeod, a comic book. They basically were the same high school. They basically were the same high school. It's like a hundred years oh, apart. Oh, it was the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they both got leather, matching Leatherman jackets. <laughs> Leatherman kilts. Yeah, there you go. Leatherman kilts. You want the Clouds go to school with me? <laughs> So when so we've got Connor and he's the one. The name of the one is Connor McLeod. But then we have a TV show. All of a sudden, the name of the one is Duncan McLeod. <laughs> so obviously, Connor is Duncan, right? More likely. You know, honestly, that's the only way to explain the TV show. Is if you if you remember the second one, which hopefully you don't, you know, they're like in space or Mars or some shit. Aliens from the planet, Aliens whatever, the trying planet, to steal our atmosphere. Somewhere, trying to steal what? The atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it makes no sense. But I bet those aliens from the planet trying to steal our atmosphere have time machines. And what happened is Connor went back in time to 100 years after he was born and became Duncan McLeod. So there is just one. So Connor is Duncan. And this is what Ruby is like. And this is what Ruby is like. <laughs> This is what Ruby is like. Okay, so basically there's only one movie to see, and that's it. No, uh, the TV show's good if you skip the first season, but then if you skip the first season, you don't know who anybody is in the show, so oh, you have to just work it. your way through it. I guess it's just going to stick with just the movie. Okay, okay, just just the not the second. Not the second the movie. The second is right out. <laughs> okay. There's only okay. one movie and a soundtrack. That's it. The soundtrack is oh. awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eigen classes. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. So, yeah, so let's say, so we can open any class of Ruby, which is cool. You can monkey patch. Yeah. Duck punch. Yep. Duck, what? That's, that's, that's the other name for monkey punch. patching. Punch. Duck punching. Duck punch. Like duck typing. Duck, duck punching. Like duck typing, except for. If it doesn't walk or talk. Sticky. You'll make me walk or talk like a duck. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. There you go. <laughs> All things are mutable. Walk <laughs> like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ouch. So when you actually do that class little arrow thingy self and then end to do your stuff, you're actually making a thing happen. Well, you're not making a thing. It's already there. But you're getting into a thing, which is the Eigen class. In this case, of a and you can, since it's a giant hierarchy, like if you remember the big tree, where's the big tree? There we go. So, there, for various reasons, you can't easily do stuff to basic object, but you can do whatever you want to object. So we're gonna. 
that gave us the capability we're going to do it. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little eigenclass method, which I don't understand why that's not just always there. And all it does is go into the eigenclass and return itself. So that after we make this class A, which does nothing, which is all we need, nothing, because we've already done eigenclass and object, which is in all classes now, is we make two of them, A and B. They're both A's, but their eigenclasses are different. Now, yeah. Now, eigenclass is the class, which is interesting. And up here, the thing is, oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, so they're not the same eigenclass, even though they're both A's. What is eigenclass supposed to be? The class unto itself. The class of the thing of which it is of itself. What? Yeah. <laughs> Go find the marker. We did this. Did it go to the same high school? <laughs> <laughs> It Who are the, you unto yourself? It went to the meta high school. It went to the meta high school. Who are you unto yourself? Does anybody have a marker? Who's really you? This is really the class. Oh, uh, oh, you want a whiteboard marker? Do you have a whiteboard marker? Here, I can, I'll, I can draw the Ruby object model. The, the unto or unto? Maybe you should use a permanent marker. Unto. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's going on here? So, so what's going on is, it's inserting into the method lookup chain. Another Whoa. class. So, you got, so say you've got like, you got A, right? Board, so and then you've got the meta class, left. and then you've got its class. You're going to be in the video if you go that way. So you can put uh, methods in the meta class, or I mean in the eigen class. Yeah. You can also put it in the meta class. That's, that's a couple yeah. slides later. Um, the same thing. Okay. Different word for the same Yeah. Thing. Some people confusingly call they, it the singleton class. They also call it a yeah. ghost class, and they draw it like this a lot because it's the hidden it's spooky class. So the Ruby object hierarchy here. Which is weird because it's also a class. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is it's better than meta classes. Uh, so grandpa. Um, so so the eigen class is this little guy right here who's kind of hidden, um, and it really becomes very apparent for most people that this is a person class. It's hard to realize that that's an instant instance, but whenever you have a person instance, so an instance of a person, a uh, lowercase person. Trying to make it small, it's lowercase. Uh, it also has its own ghost class, and this is why add and Ruby you can add methods to an instance that won't show up on any other instance of person. <laughs> because whenever Ruby looks up a method, it goes over one and it says, Does this have the method defined? That way, if you have a like person, can you define, can you go back where you define a method somewhere? A normal method? <laughs> you know, we don't. You gotta, uh, so, no, that's sort of man, that. That's sort. No, that's no, keep going. That's, that's an eigenclass <laughs> method. <laughs> hey, oh, initialize. No, initialize is not quite a normal method. Yeah. It is, <laughs> but then we got to talk about new die. Uh, die. die. <laughs> so when you define die, uh, if if your instance held a copy of the die method, then every time you make a new uh, people, a new people, a new person. Every time you would make a new person, it would make a copy of this, and so you would quickly fill up your RAM. Plus, if you wanted to override die of some person, like let's say he's a Highlander, and he can only <laughs> die by having his head cut off, so die isn't really die. He like comes back. Um, then you, it would override all all of them. So whenever you override it, it adds it to the eigen class, which is like this hidden class that everybody has their own. So Ruby goes to the right, looks in there. If it can't find it, it goes to the person class, which is why these don't have self in front of them, is that they're actually for another guy down the chain, and then it'll move up the chain. I don't know if that makes anything more clear. No question. Um, so is a singleton class the same as an eigen class, or are they different? Some people call same the singleton. Three, three, four different names. Jess, can he borrow this in case he needs to? Eigen class, meta class, singleton right. class, and ghost class. And, and, different and here's the other thing. Yeah. Well, there's another white one. Here's the other thing. So some people call both of these the eigen class, class to confuse yeah. it. Yeah. And there's yeah. no official. I don't think there's any actual official names anywhere. Some people call eigen class the eigen class. Some people call the eigen class the eigen class. Some people call the eigen class the eigen class. 
I already forgot which one's, what's the beta class and what's the eigen class? Well, one, one of them, like, in, these are a little in, bit different. Inside the Ruby code, and I don't remember if they call it eigen class or, I think they call it eigen class, not singleton class. But inside the Ruby source is one of those names, and then I think it's singleton class. And everybody says that that is fairly confusing. So it's better call it eigen class or meta class. Or ghost class. But, but these are actually a little bit different. These, this goes for this goes are a little bit different. So so the, the funny Not thing Not really. Is, because a person is an instance of class, class, class yeah. and, that's why, and that one, has that's why person has it the same thing. They're in the core, they're the exact same object. It's just how you're using it. So the Sometimes you see a little prime symbol beside it that uh, if they're highlighting all the yeah, medic class. That's what it's It's fun to look at. So I have a better question. Yeah. All right, so say I've got um, two instance variables of person. Uh -huh. And then, so do each of them have their own chain all the way up thing? So, like, they each have, like, I know they each have their the first eigen class, but then they've got the so first eigen class. Yeah. You can have yeah. that. And, right. And so then they would each have their own eigen class. Like the person, <laughs> no. the person class, no. The per so, so each person has its own eigen class. Oh, and this okay, person right, class right, has right, its right, own right. eigen class. Yeah. Wait, I, I have an important question. Yes. When you define a method on the person class, is it actually on the person class, or is it on the ghosty thing between person and class? When you define a method, Ruby always looks to the right. So when you define a class for person. Or a method that's going to be on an instance method of person, it's actually here. It's actually on the person it's square. It's actually on the person square, not okay. here, because every person instance has a copy of this. So if you did yeah, that, you would grow screen. really quickly. Right, but, right, but, okay. It doesn't go on the, the ghosty thing. No. Between person and class. That, when you do the class arrow, arrow self, or if you, you can also do def self. Uh, you well, you, yeah. you can take an instance. You can have a person instance, and you can say def uh, Jess dot laugh. Right. So it's going to be different, different from the parent class. Between class arrow arrow self and def who versus def self dot who. Same thing. Two two syntaxes that give the same thing. Right. That's my impression. So they, oh they yeah, that's the same thing. I, I don't use this yeah. one. Yeah, me neither. Because so, I think it sometimes gets you, you but you need it more yeah, you, yeah. you needed to well, do things like I don't that access to find that. I right. use this for CS, but yeah. CS yeah. so yeah, like, to fix it. I just yeah. checked it's only <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I usually do this because I don't like turning self dot <laughs> I didn't know if drawing is would help, but I think it might have confused. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so so basically what we're saying is you could do prototype based inheritance. This is where we is this the slide where we would Basic to the yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're there. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused. I'm confused. But that's it's, it's, it's not all that arcane, actually. I mean, it's used in a lot of meta programming, which yeah. is considered well, arcane. Which is itself arcane. Well, once right. you once you figure out the object model, meta programming becomes yeah. kind of this like yeah. simple joke. Like you look at it, and you're like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is when you start understanding. This is when the people that you're pairing with go. Holy shit, that compiler knows it's Amos. Which I've been told. Do you have your own videos. copy of Ruby and yeah. compiled on your machine? a video of Ruby that you can get off the crack part and he did it himself where he talks about the ghost class and all this. And it, he's better at it than I Have you had anyone accuse you of modifying Ruby source code on your machine? No. No. <laughs> no, they just said that Ruby nerd it's me, so it just does what I want. <laughs> and I usually follow that up with, this cannot stay in here for production. <laughs> it is us, right? Because this, this will work. Now make it real. <laughs> so, so now. Since, since we've got our little ghost Which class, right? It's like you were talking about, like Jess could have her own special private method. Right, so we've got this class C and it does F, which does something. And we made two, two things that are C's, one's lowercase C and one's D, right? Except for D, we decide to do something completely different. 
just for it. Instead of printing off X like everybody else does, it's special. It's just no clip. It prints it off in reverse because it can. And so yeah, it, the, I guess you could do prototype with this if you really wanted. Yeah, Aki's done it. So that goes on the ghost class, right? Between D and um, goes on D. C. Yeah. Yeah, it's just on D. This new F is just on D. Yeah. Not the ghost class. Whatever that goes to class. Now that's the thing that was like confusing. Like some people seem to want to call like one of these eigen class and the other meta class, but some people just call it both and there seems to be no official one at all. So that that thing really wants your attention. Yes, it does. Really. And it's gonna pop up the other thing. Just it is. We're gonna I'm gonna look up in this, we're gonna look up in the C code what they call it. You'd say that's the official one. This is when you know you're at a real meetup. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to look at the C code. Okay, what? Wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the question, Mike. So they are the same thing, but they're not. I'm not in the class. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Is that actually a thing? <laughs> singleton class is a class for a particular object, and Eigen class is a singleton class. <laughs> a meta class is a class of a class. Meta class is a kind of singleton class. Meta meta class is a class of a meta class. And meta to the nth class is a class of the meta to the nth minus one class. <laughs> I think this was a joke. <laughs> Attached I don't know, object. it sounds like a, a math major class right? knows its unique instance. I, it really sounds like a math major wrote that. You know, it's like, well, how do you understand, you know, thirty-two dimensional space? Well, you just said that was in a comment. That was in a comment. Yeah. Comments are bullshit. So we're gonna find real code. Yeah. <laughs> but, comments. Well, lie. well, you just imagine in dimensional space, and you said into thirty-two. <laughs> it's the same thing with that. What does it mean to do that class three self thing inside of that? Where? Mm -hmm. That. Yeah. That. Um, oh, that's uh, the meta class. They, they call it a meta class. The actual C code describes it as a meta class. Which one? All of them, or just one? It, no, it's all. It's all the They're same all thing. Made They're all exactly the same. Uh, you are opening uh, object, which is here. So is there a ghosty thing so here? Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Every, well, every, every object has. <laughs> a, you're getting it. A <laughs> ghost. There's ghost. There's ghost. There's ghost. There's ghost. There's not necessarily there's anything in them. <laughs> there's not necessarily anything in them. <laughs> and if there's not one, it kind of it, if you yeah, optimize it, that's what the soul is. It's our ghost class. class. Yeah. Yeah. Self and look at the I can, if you don't leave the class name, uh, 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 there's no I can class. It's easier to tell what's going on. Once it clicks, it's like it's just a script. Yeah, you can see the whole world. It's like going in here, it's going in here. That method is going in the object box. It's going to be this rectangle. It's weird. Yeah, I can class. I can class. What's with the class pretty self thing inside the method? That's so I can get self. Because otherwise there's no easy way to get to self. Except for using all self. self. It's, it's, well, it's in the self self. Yeah, yeah, self, self. It's a, yeah, self, yeah. not self. That's what he's doing there. But yeah. Yeah. Did you write the self on self? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, think so. Conceptually, yeah. but not that. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to get self. It's self. So basically, I class is just a So you're getting the class of... That gives, does it give the ghosty thing? It gives this one gives this ghosty. Oh, wait, you, you can wait, tell wait. by this one like, gives that ghosty. He's creating yes. a method called and you can tell by, by oh, printing I cell. In this case, he's higher up, so I think. Uh, so Jessica, now you've named this one meta class. That's and this one eigenclass. Yeah. Jessica, if you do this in so, IRB, you like, can print self. <laughs> And, and then, then like you can a, really see what these are. Yeah, uh, I was actually going to suggest that people should just try it. <laughs> More right people. And then Everybody. you're going to go, Scala and Closure suck. <laughs> 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 Scala and Closure suck. 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 Scala and Closure Purpose of scholars. Closure is appeal superior instead of smart. <laughs> right, right. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I don't need closure for that. I just go to meet up soon. The comparison's graph is, is, is curvier than our oh, so trailer. here's how I do slides. Those are not PowerPoint. Beamer? E-Max. No, his own LaTeX. LaTeX. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so yeah, but we got a class of C. Uh, and if we do the same for... Uh, for yeah. 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 Before Beamer existed. So we do class of D. Actually, Beamer's every class of D. Class Maybe cut by class. So that's a different one. It did have the eye. It's slightly it different. Even though C and D, if you look here, are all frequently. Um, like I have the other class. class. I forget the object. They're both capital C's. Yeah. And, and you can do the, the template for all the instances. Class foo, and just inside of it, do self and end, and you can see it returns foo, and then you can do class foo. Arrow, arrow, self, and see that it's completely different. I think it's weird. Self, type in self, and then end. So self inside of there's the arrow is what it returned. Yeah, because self is the because everything class. returns right. So now if you do class arrow arrow foo, oh. and then self, end, now you'll get foo class. But <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Here there be dragons? Yes. We can go all night here. You won't make it through the rest of your slides. But there's only one. That was the end of the slides. Oh, that was the end of the slides? There was an eye. Yeah. There was a question slide. Yeah. No. I missed it. A few answer slides. Just questions now. What would be the difference if you took out that that method, the eye class method? Would there be any practical? Uh, it's still there, it's just, it doesn't have a name that you, okay. get. you can't easily get to it. Okay. Well, you can't. It's just you gotta use that class error of self thing, so. Yeah. It's just if like you're gonna do some meta programming, it's nice to have that. Yeah. It's easier to get it. Okay. 